we started the gaming with the police. Um, we started it at the first wave of the corona. Uh, and, um, we started it because we noticed that we were losing the connection with the youth. Uh, a large part of the youth uh, moved indoors. That's in general a movement that we see also without corona. Uh, um, and we wondered how can we stay in touch with, the, uh, with those youth? Uh, um, how can we speak with them? Uh, give them advice, give them help, uh, um, lower the boundaries to talk with the police uh, and with, with help youth workers, for example. Um, then we thought every, in, in the Netherlands at least, almost every uh, a kind of device in home, uh, uh, PC or station, Xbox, uh, you name it. I think last research is about 86% of um, kids between 13, uh, mm -hmm. they uh, um, we've noticed that they are really uh, active online, so we wanted to dive in there. And that's why we started gaming with the police, and it's actually just um, like the digital, like the community officer going to the uh, soccer field uh, on the streets and uh, playing with the youth, talking to the youth. Um, that's what we do, but then on the online basis. Um, we have uh, on uh, at this moment six uh, different police stations. Uh, we have complete things that we need to do. This. Um, in Almere, that's where I live, we have four nights, uh, four evenings every week uh, that we are online. We are online, I think about three hours in the evening. And um, youth can look us up uh, and game with us and chat with us. We have a headset on and we can talk live with them. We've been doing that for, I think, about a year now, and we are at the moment to uh, uh, to ask more teams to join us. So in one or two months, we're going to 20 till 20, uh, and we are getting further results of what we're doing. And um, we're really happy with that. We The youth told us eh, that they, um, they find it interesting um, changing to look to what they find interesting um, and that really lowers the boundaries um, to talk with us and to trust us. Um, we've noticed that they're really free to tell us everything about well, all the youth problems, yeah? uh, uh, cyberbullying, sexting, uh, loneliness, depressions. Yeah? We've talked about all of it. Uh, and the nice thing is that we can really uh, immediately respond to what they tell us. Yeah, so uh, we can give them advice. Um, we can uh, call in other uh, organizations yeah, to help us or to help uh, the, 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 the youth. Um, and that's one of the powers of the, the project that we are uh, doing. Uh, so we wanted to step off the repression. Yeah? We, we, uh, Ilias told it there, yeah, um, that giving the fines, giving the fines, giving the fines. Uh, we don't think that the youth benefits with fines. Yeah? So we wanted to do more. But that's a bit in a short story, uh, the gaming with the police. Um, from that idea, Unite was born. And Unite is actually uh, an online platform yeah? um, where for the youth in the Netherlands, every night, uh, widely, um, how do I say it? Several partners that uh, 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 several uh, sports, uh, DJs, um, beauty vlogs, uh, three different things um, to keep it the, the like every Wednesday, like live talk show with us. Uh, uh, a depression, gaming, um, all kinds of things uh, with expert table. Uh, clinics like DJ clinics, uh, gaming clinics, uh, all kinds of things. So that's really what we're trying to do eh, is, is grab the youth, uh, do online prevention work, stay in touch with them, uh, lower the boundaries to talk with us eh, because the police in the Netherlands um, we are really good positioned, but we still notice eh, that youth sometimes have trouble talking to us. Eh? Uh, they feel the pressure of the group eh, and the leader of the group, and um, that's sometimes difficult for them to talk with us. Uh, so that's a, a really in a short way, yeah.
try to explain what we are doing in the Netherlands. So I, as I said, I work for Save the Children Finland and I work on a project called Radical Web. Um, and it focuses on preventing violent extremism and radicalization in young people with a particular focus on online environments. And we do this by training youth workers on these issues. We organize trainings as well as in-depth workshops for youth workers. Um, and right now I'll share some observations that we've made both us at Save the Children, but also youth workers that we work with. Um, so in the past year, we've been kind of discussing how we can better support youth workers and listening to what their concerns are when it comes to extremism and radicalization. And in Finland in general, the, uh, the violent far right is the uh, biggest threat and concern in the field of PVE. Um, and this is also very evident in what we've heard from youth workers who are generally quite concerned um, about the kids that they work with. Um, youth workers have told us that in increasing amounts, young people uh, are showing signs of support for far right ideologies and, and groups. Um, online youth work is, is quite a big part of the work that my team does within Save the Children. And we've discussed how radicalization manifests on the, uh, the various platforms that, that my team and their volunteers utilize. Um, recently, it hasn't really shown up on these platforms. However, a few years ago on one of these platforms, a far-right identifying person would systematically share propaganda and far-right contents on the platform and would sometimes gain traction with other young people or have friends come and do the same thing. Um, and this is obviously a bit of a challenging issue as it's always quite difficult to determine if the po person posting these things is actually a young person seeking help or someone who is systematic or uh, and a part of a radical group or just, you know, a, a troll. Um, the team tried to engage with them constructively for about six months, but since they weren't able to really reason with them um, and they kept making other participants very, very uncomfortable, they had to ban them from, from using this platform. And uh, thankfully, there haven't really been any similar incidents since. Um, but recruitment of young people into far right groups is nothing really new in Finland. Um, this past year, it has become much more visible, both online and offline. Um, additionally, within the past year, new far right youth groups have formed in Finland. Um, for example, the website of one of these groups clearly states that they're aiming to recruit 13 to 25 year olds into their activities. Um, on their website, the group shares propaganda relating to Holocaust denial, the white genocide, um, as well as um, population change in Finland. Um, this particularly was quite concerning for us to save the children because they were sharing screenshots from the Instagram accounts of uh, various schools, which featured underage children who didn't look Finnish uh, to prove that there is an attempt to replace Finns with foreigners in schools around um, the Helsinki area in particular. And the pictures featured these children's faces, um, which is also very concerning for us as an organization um, trying to protect children's rights. Um, the website also features videos of activities that the group has organized, for example, distributing stickers around different cities for propaganda purposes. Additionally, they posted a video on their website of them burning a pride flag that they had stolen from a government building while doing a Nazi salute. Um, these videos don't uh, feature the faces of the perpetrators, but they seem to be um, quite young, the people doing this. Um, the pride flag video was originally posted to TikTok, where it then made rounds to other platforms as well, um, and also being posted onto their website where they clearly took responsibility for, for this act. Um, offline, these groups organize, uh, among other things, they organize nature trips, lectures, um, physical activity, in particular classes in different combat and martial arts, um, in addition to tagging Nazi and ethno-nationalist stickers and graffiti around various cities. Um, and this kind of recruitment increased somewhat during the COVID lockdown last year. Um, our one and only lockdown that we had was from March to the end of May-ish. Um, this was in the spring, 
uh, and the mayor mayor of one of the biggest cities in Finland warned about this phenomenon then um, last spring um, when information on far right groups targeting vulnerable youth who were made even more vulnerable because of the lockdown um, had come from both youth workers as well as the police. Um, and citizens were also reporting flyers and other material being put into their put into their mailboxes in an attempt to recruit into into these groups and collectives. Um, people were saying that they saw um, who was putting the material into their mailboxes and, and they looked to be underage as well. So it was clearly these, these youth groups that were doing this. Um, and yeah, this is something that we're, we're attempting to look into further um, within our project and we hope to, to release, release a report on it soon. Oh. We have interdisciplinary groups of um, Police, uh, there's social workers, there's nurses, there's um, teaching staff who work in an interdisciplinary manner. So anytime, you know, it's not just for PVE purposes, it's also for, you know, crime prevention, um, et cetera. You know, anything that worries worries you about a about a young person, you can go to them. But they also work in in PVE. Um, so. The police is very much involved in that, and they're actually the ones coordinating it in these in these municipalities. That's what we also use the gaming with the police for, uh, is that we, uh, for example, in Almere, we try to combine all the different disciplines. Uh, for example, we are uh, in the progress of organizing a tournament, online tournament, and we're doing that together with uh, 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 Almere, that's where I work. Uh, with the youth workers in Almere, the organizations, uh, we do it with a large uh, uh, soccer a football club in Almere, Almere City. We are doing it with, with schools, with, with all the groups that have a contact with youth in their own way. We try to combine that and make one combined effort to reach the youth and to try to um, interact with them eh, and try to uh, get in their interests. But it's kind of also for my colleagues a regulation when going online that it's that they are clearly identifiable as you for us maybe with just first name and then name of the unit they belong to something like this. Uh, we always identify ourselves uh, about our gaming. We created uh, a special platform for it, um, so we are not uh, searching for the youth. And they are, uh, we want them to come to us uh, yeah. so that they don't feel obligated to uh, game with us or, or talk with us. It's really when they want to, uh, um, we are there uh, and then they can find us. We talk about what, what, what they want to talk about. They start the conversation uh, and from there we go on. And I think that way um, they don't really feel uh, that we, um, push them off their their uh, platforms eh? regularly they just show up and look us up eh? and and um, talk to us come to us and really I think that makes quite a difference I think we have the similar similar experience um, I've also heard from my colleagues that they're saying that that these youth are are looking for a grown-up someone kind of neutral to talk to about about their issues that they need feel like they need that grown-up perspective in, in what they're talking to um, that they're not getting from their peers, for example. We, we also said we're going to do it on a regular basis, um, always one hour. Um, so if they're having problems or they want to share something, they know at what hour they can come because otherwise it's really um, difficulty for, for everybody of us to be online 24-7. Uh, we didn't um, connect with all the youngsters. Um, so that's still a problem um, that a lot of youngsters uh, now during the, the lockdown um, are really difficult to find. What we found out is that the easiest way to make contact online is to um, get the police uh, on the schools. Um, in our part, the youth workers and the police uh, took several programs uh, on the schools and they came every year. Uh, so they saw the youth worker and the policeman um, uh, every year. So they, they get some connection and then they connected on Instagram. And uh, what we found out is that 
if uh, when the period was when they didn't see us, uh, it was easier for them to uh, to be in contact. Yeah, we also found out that that a lot of uh, youth workers uh, don't know the these these alternative platforms, and um, what what we are doing now is we create some extra modules about uh, um, conspiracy theories and 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 uh, right uh, extremistic uh, uh, pictures and uh, the ACAB pictures and uh, uh, numbers. Um, who are, which are all signals of extremism. Um, so I think it's very important for, for, for all the youth workers uh, to at least know what's going on, that if they see a picture, they can can, uh, can get contact to the youth and uh, to the teenagers and say, well, what are you doing and, and, and what's happening and why do you think it's so fantastic and, and get eh, be, be in, in contact with them. The second one, and that's something that we're still uh, working on, uh, that's the skill set of an online outreach worker. Um, we have a lot of youth workers, and, and we want to give them the right um, uh, background education and so on, uh, so that they can actually use those kind of skill sets online. And we saw that not, uh, not every youth worker, even if they're young, um, it, it's still a big gap. It's still a big gap on how to reach out on an online environment with youngsters give every youth worker the time give them time to create content to 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 make a, a youtube videos or, or content for for instagram also uh, um and and that's that's a change which a lot of organizations uh got to go through you never should uh, should see this as a as a standalone activity the online world is not existing by itself, separated from something else. There's always a connection to, to the non-online. If some youngsters come up with a really with an issue online, that that one of the things that our colleagues would try to do is uh, to get this into a into a, a real life conversation. You mentioned the 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 online world, but for for, for young people, there is no online world. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's just one world, uh, and and um, that also uh, uh, takes me back to what I just said. Is that it's it's not you do uh, as an extra. It's 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 not instead of. It's it's um, it completes the youth work in total. Before there was a really uh, difference uh, within the police. Eh? We had online workers, but the information that they gathered was all solely online. Uh, and we've lost a lot of information and connect connection with the people outside. Uh, and same for the people on the streets. Uh, they got their information on the streets, uh, talked to people on the street, but they didn't go online. Uh, so there was no connection between those two. And that's where my function was created to breach that gap uh, and to bring all the parties together. We just have to adapt a little more. It's not only online or offline, it's just the real world, um, one world, and it's all pieces of the puzzle. And how more you know where the youngsters are located um, or what kind of areas they are, how easier it is to combine those areas and to make always the link, the bridges between all the different um, activities. Um, and it's it's really important also to, to make the youngsters um, come to you or to, to try to find a way to talk with them in real life uh, because then you can make steps that are not so easy to make through the online world. Um, so I think it's not um, more work, it's just another way to looking at the work we have to do to uh, reach the youngsters.